Hi guys, welcome to Charities Bubble USA, your number one channel. Today I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about three questions that uh, were asked by um, members. And um, first of all, I want to thank my subscribers. Guys, we've reached 3,519 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for asking those questions. Thank you for always be there. Hmm? I told you that this is a journey that we are going to work. And this is a journey that uh, we are going to uh, persevere. You're going to he hear a lot of things. But at the end of the day, we are not going uh, to lose hope. You're going to keep on keeping on. And uh, I know that uh, we, we are just uh, almost uh, a, throw, a stone through to May 7 to check uh, the results for DV 2022. My name is Charity Nganga. This is Charity Bab Charities Bubble USA on my one channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly consider hitting the subscribe button. Consider hitting the notification button so that you can know when every time that I upload a new videos. So guys, I know I haven't uploaded a video in the last two days, but I've been, oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> when you go to school, when you're a parent, it's so hard. It's, it's crazy, but um, I'll make it. I always like to give you guys hope because hope, hope is all we have. In whatever that you're doing, you have to hope for the best. You have to put all your effort and do it uh, like you'll never do it again. So, guys, um, I want to talk about um, there's this person who just texted me right now and they were like, oh, Charity, they have introduced a new bill. We still haven't come to the U.S. Now, uh, the thing that I can tell you guys is that um, you, you should not worry so much about the bills that are being introduced here in the U.S. Because they will still continue to be introduced. Maybe by the time even you come here, there will be like another like 20 or 30 that will be introduced. The thing uh, that you should, um, that we should worry you is it, when it becomes to a law and what clauses can affect you as a, a DV lottery winner. That is what you should worry about. And as soon as it becomes, a, a, any bill becomes a law and it touches or it affects um, uh, the immigrants who come here with a green card, or uh, someone who has been here and they are a permanent resident and they are awaiting uh, to become citizens, I will come here and I will talk about it. But I do not want you uh, to worry and to be stressed that um, a bill was introduced or whatever goes on. It doesn't matter, guys, because uh, the work of the government of U.S. must go on. Whether DV lottery is being um, announced or not, it must go on. Hmm? So you find that uh, unless it becomes a law, unless it is something that uh, maybe they say that uh, something that concerns the DV lottery has really happened and it has passed to a law. I told you guys that a bill is, uh, is an idea that is introduced to the house. And before that idea goes to all the processes to become a law, it, it has to go through so many steps. Mm -hmm. But uh, before it is not a law, you guys should not be worried. But as soon as it is something new and it is something that is going to affect you when it becomes the law, then I will come here and I'm going to tell you about it. So I'm not going to dwell so much on that uh, because I feel like it should not, you should not be stressed so much. Uh, what should you should uh, be doing now is to anticipate the interview that should be coming up if you win the DV lottery and the preparation that you should do uh, if, you, if you win the DV lottery. Now, uh, there's this person who also asked me about uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. that uh, social media, if it can affect uh, your interview or if social media can affect anything, yes, it can. Because uh, you find that when you win your DV lottery, they do a background check. And how they do a background check or why they do a background check is that um, they want to know you more. Hmm? Now, let's take an example whereby you've met someone or you've heard about someone. Hmm? Someone may be popular or whatever. The first thing that you do, if you don't know them, them very well, you go to the phone and Google them. Hmm? You Google them, you go through, do, so you type uh, their name even on Facebook, on Twitter, on um, Instagram to see if you can see anything about those people. Hmm? That is how we do, like normal people. So you can imagine, uh, this is um, the, you, you, are, you, you are to go to the embassy and uh, they don't know so much information about you. The only thing maybe they will have is the police clearance record. So where else do you think that they will get information about you? They will get it from those social media handles. So it depends on what you are posting. And I've all, always said here, if you are posting something that you're not going to look at and feel ashamed, then you should be fine. You should not worry about anything that you have posted. But if you are posting something 
that uh, you should look at and that thing uh, makes you uh, even shanda you know i mean like you cannot even want to look at it twice then you should be worried you know what i mean because i believe just like the way we google people just like the way you know like uh when someone talks about charities babu you will go and uh, if you type google and you type charities babu you will find my channel there because it's gonna come up hmm? it's gonna come up the same same thing that is gonna happen when you are going for those interviews i'm trying to adjust my light because i don't like um uh, i don't like the way it's looking i hope it looks better so um like i said if you are posting let's assume that you are posting stuff about um about us and you are not posting posting very nice things uh, you are post you are not posting very nice things you find that if they go and read something that is not good of course they are not going to give you a visa <laughs> This it's like uh, you want to go and visit someone's house and you have been bound mouthing them. That person is not gonna invite you to their house. Now that's how you should look at it. So whatever you post on social media, they normally don't care. Actually, they don't care about social media, but there is no way that you can post something that is sensitive or something that is um maybe something that is um violent or uh something that is you know, like something that you're attacking us you're attacking this country of course they are not going to give you the visa nobody is going to uh, agree to give you a, a visa if you have not been uh posting nice things but if you're just a genuine person and whatever you post on your social media page it's okay hmm? it's okay it doesn't matter so you should not be worried about that so much and i thought that i should talk about because that person um I, I got that question from two people and i was like oh wow i should talk about this because this is kind of serious so it's very 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 important for you Whatever you're posting, to post it um, responsibly and to post it wisely, very, very wisely, because you do not want what you posted on social media uh, to haunt you back. Even when you're looking for a job, it's not even come, coming to the US. And I know that I've talked about this before. If you're going to look for a job when you're going for a job interview, uh, the first thing that they will look at, they will look at your social media. They want to know what kind of person you are. What do you post there? Hmm? They, they want to know it's it's it, you know it's always in the curiosity of the mind of a person that you want to know that person more even before you meet them what kind of person is this what do they do you know do they have a family because if you go to a, someone's social social media handle some people like posting their family like me i like posting my kids or whatever my husband so you will know you have at least you get to connect it's, it's a connection so as so long as you have not been posting anything that is bad you should not worry about it. Nobody cares about what you're posting as long as it's not something that um, is affecting or it's it's a bad thing. You know what I mean? So uh, what I say is that, um, and I'm going to repeat this, is that whatever that you're posting there, if you look at it and you do not feel ashamed with that, you sh then you should not worry about it. But if you're looking at it and you're feeling that you are ashamed, then you should think twice about what you're posting in social media. It's very, very, very important for you to know that. Now, Let's talk about uh, the other question was about a uh, preparation for the interview. Hmm? When you're going for the interview, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're going uh, for an interview to become a student, international student. It doesn't matter whether you're going for an interview for a DV lottery. It doesn't matter when, whether you're going for an interview for a B1, B2, when you're coming to be a visitor or a conference or whatever. Now you find that uh, the, 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 the student and the visitor, those ones are very different. And I normally tell you that the, the visa that doesn't have so many hurdles is the DV lottery visa. Now, let's assume that you are going for that um, interview for becoming a student or you want to come and visit. The first thing that you should have in your mind is that you must prove the, to the consular beyond reasonable doubt that after you have been given that visa and you come to visit, you will, back, you will go back home. You have to prove that because if you are not able to prove that, they are not going to give you that visa. They will not. So you have to show them maybe you have social ties, you have family members that you will go back to, you have a job, maybe you have a farm, or you have a certain responsibility that that holds you, that you have to go back home to go and check on. Hmm? But if you go there and you are being asked a question and you don't even know the answer, then uh, that creates doubt on the person who is, giving you the, the, the visa and they might deny you the visa. I'm not saying that they auto, they'll automatically deny, but they might. Another thing that I talked about is that now here in the US, you find that we are not so much used to uh, a lot of suits and whatever. People wear business casual. Business casual is like uh, maybe you can just wear 
uh, like just a top and pants, nice pants. But normally when you're going for an interview, do not go for that, that suit, you know, a suit and a tie and whatever. Oh, that's too much. Don't go with all that. You have to be smartly dressed. Of course, do not go in your pajamas or you go in your... Um, or you or, or you go in in t-shirts no just look for business casual it's good uh your cro your clothes have to be uh well you know well if you have to be presentable that's what i mean another thing is that i most of the interviews you have to go very early so make sure that you're early there uh, our interview i remember it was uh, supposed to be at 6 p.m 6 a.m sorry 6 a.m very early in the morning we were there at four and it was raining so you can imagine you have to be there early so that you are ready and you're prepared because you find that from the gate, before you even go to be interviewed, there is a very high screening, guys. You will be screened. They will check your bag. They will check everything. They have to check everything that you have hmm, before you go there. And it takes it takes it takes some time. It it does take some time. So you have you have to be on time. It's not you know you you know uh, Africans do not know how to keep time. I don't know why, but they just don't keep time. And you find that if you go there and with that notion that there is no hurry in Africa, then you will find that you will be late. And if you are late for an appointment, that's a bad thing. So make sure that when you're going for your appointment, you are there early. Hmm? You're there early so that, um, you you know, the nerves, you're able to calm your nerves. Hmm? You're able to calm your nerves uh, because if you go that you're late, you find that you will be very anxious. You don't want that anxiety. You want to be relaxed by the time you go there. Another thing that I said when you are going for that interview, make sure that when you are being interviewed, you are you are maintaining eye contact. Eye contact is very important, guys. I know our African way. We are taught that uh, when we are talking to people who are superior, that we should not look at them in the eye. Now, the American way is different, guys. When you are looking at talking to an American, they want to see that eye contact. They want to see that you are looking at them on the eyes because um, when you look sides, when you bend down, they tend to think that you are not uh, telling, you are not being truthful. So it's very, very important for you to maintain eye contact. If you have not learned about it, start practicing eye contact. You have to maintain eye contact. It's very, very, very important for you uh, to do that. Of course, show some confidence and also answer the questions that you have been asked. Hmm? Answer the question that you have been asked. Do not volunteer any information. Because you can be asked, and I always like to say this because I know like uh, most people like to volunteering a lot of information. And when you volunteer information, then you give that other person who is interviewing you uh, more questions to ask you. Hmm? Because they might ask, ask you, when were you born? When they ask when were you, were you born, you are just supposed to tell them the date that you were born, period. That's it. Hmm? But if you ask when you were born and then I, you say this is the date that I was born, and then I was born in, uh, in in a certain place, then you are volunteering information that you are not asked. Hmm? So make sure that you are direct. If you are asked a question, answer it directly. Hmm? Take the question, answer it directly, and then wait for another question. Hmm? But that part of uh, being, um, being asked, especially when you're coming with a visitor's visa, you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that you will go back home. Another thing that I want to talk about is the documents. The documents that were requested. Now, those ones, guys, make sure that they are in order. Hmm? They have to be in order. You have to arrange them very nicely. Get a folder. Hmm? Arrange them from the beginning to the end. The way the paper says, because they put them in order. You know, I told you guys when I came here, I learned that uh, order is very, very important. Because I know when we went to school hmm, at our time, when we went to school, we were not taught all that orderly stuff. Because I remember... Uh, we used to have just a bag. So you put all, you stack all your books in your bag and that's it. You find that here, when uh, when kids go to school, they have a folder, a file. Every, every subject has its own file. So they put all their stuff in a different file and those files are color coded. That means they have different color. If it is for homework, it's red. If it is for classwork, maybe it's blue or whatever. I have to buy so many files for my kids to go to school so that their work can be arranged. Hmm? That's something that I had to learn. So you find that you should get a nice folder or a nice file, whatever. You put your stuff in there so that it is orderly. Because when you go there, before you go to see the consular, you find there are some people who are here at the front. The first thing you do, if it's a divi lottery, first of all, you will pay. And remember, you're paying your money in cash. And then you will go to the next slot where they will ask you for the documents. You haven't reached the consular yet. After they ask you for your documents, they verify them. That is where they see 
do you, do you come with all the documents? Because they look at the letter that they sent you. Hmm? And then after that, then you they will they will send you out and then they will call you back for fingerprinting. And then after fingerprinting, it doesn't take long, then you're called by the consular. The consular is always the last person to interview you. So you have to be arranged, you have to be organized. Actually, otherwise, if you're not organized, then you know when you're not organized, um you and and you just make one mistake. You asked, where, do you, where did you carry this? Do you have this? And then you didn't have it. That distorts your mind. That brings all in the all, all, all the anxiety. You do not want that to happen. So you find that do not start preparing your documents in the morning. Prepare them the previous day. Make sure that you, they're ready and uh, even your passport and everything is ready because you can forget. It's very very easy for you to forget. So I want you guys uh, to get that. Another thing that I told you is that mind your own business. Hmm? And I'm going to insist on this because uh, as Africans, we don't know how to mind our own business. Uh, we do not know how to mind our own business. Because you find that when you go there, they, you know, you will sit with, I know right now there's social distancing and all that. Before when we went, I remember we were just stacked all over. We were so many people stacked all over. And uh, you find that people tend to ask when they see someone has gone in and they have been given, they tend to ask, oh, what, what were you asked? What did you say? How comes you are given? They will ask you all those questions. Now, do not be that person who is asking what people found out when they went in there. Go there and mind your business. Hmm? Carry a magazine or whatever. Read a book while you are waiting. But do not go asking, soliciting questions from the people who are interviewed. Because that, that is uh, something that can make you panic. Because you'll be like, oh, maybe I won't be given. Because no, every, every case is individualized. And why that person maybe was denied or why that person was given is because uh, maybe it was a different one. I remember when we got our, um, our visas, hmm, after we had gone for the interview, I remember there was this very smartly dressed lady who was right next to me. You know me, uh, I was, it was me, my husband, my kids, and uh, my, my daughter at that time was little. So, you know, when you have a little baby, like, you, you know, you, <laughs> the baby is all over. I remember I had carded some cakes and that child had just dropped them everywhere. <laughs> so, like, it, I didn't even have order, you know. You know, when you have a small child, uh, you, 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 you tend to be stressed. So, when we went... We went in, I remember I had forgotten something there at the seat. So after we were given the visa, I had to go back. And I think it was a lesson. Hmm? I had forgotten it there. So I had to go back and get it. So when I got it, oh my gosh, let me tell you. Before I went to read the other questions that I had been asked, I just chose to ignore. I didn't. I just told them, just go on your own and maybe you'll be told whatever you will be told. Because now I was like, who do I talk to? Who do I, because everybody wants to know. I want you not to be like that. It doesn't matter whether a person was denied or they were given. That is none of your business. Okay? So don't. Do not. Huh? Do not because you find that. If you do that, you are listening to the people who came in from there. Some of them were denied or some of them were given. Maybe you had prepared very well on what you were going to say. But simply because someone was given a visa and, and they, they, tell, they tell you this is what I answer. Or maybe they are lying. Hmm? Maybe they are lying. That is what you, when you ask, you go to answer, and then you will fail your interview. You do not want to do that. Make sure that you go there, pray, have faith, and you will be successful. So I felt like I, I should talk about this because it's important to know because people are very anxious, very, very anxious about it. And uh, I just wish you all the best, guys. And thank you for supporting me, always supporting me. Thank you for always uh, being there. Thank you for always watching my videos. I really, really do appreciate you. I look at my numbers. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm doing well. So uh, I hope that um, you guys have a good day. And I hope that you watch uh, my video. I know it's getting, it's, it's almost morning. I think it's in the morning there in Africa. Because right now it's 11 p.m. It just uh, reached 11 p.m. And uh, I am now going to stop here. Thank you and God bless you.